Well, the sex trafficking charges against Jeffrey Epstein are horrifying, but there's a part of the story that's mysterious and interesting and potentially significant legally and newsworthy. Jeffrey Epstein was famously rich. He was friends with the world's richest and most influential people. He had one of the most expensive homes in New York City, access to a private jet, he literally his own private island. Everyone calls him billionaire Jeffrey Epstein. You'd think billionaire was his first name. All of a sudden, though, no one can answer the most obvious question. How much money did he have, and how did he make it? What did Jeffrey Epstein do for a living? Nobody seems to know. Well, we're confused. There's one person we go to just reflexively. <laughs> Melissa Francis, she comes up to number here at Fox News Channel. Also, after the bell on Fox Business, we're always happy to have her. Maybe you know the answer, Melissa Francis. So the same thing was driving me crazy, that people kept saying billionaire hedge fund manager. And I'm like, what hedge fund? What are we exactly. talking about here? Where did this money come from? This has been the subject of a lot of mystery and curiosity for a while. You mentioned the property. We can verify and confirm that, yes, he does own at least six properties around the world, including that $80 million townhouse in New York and that private island. But where did the money to buy that come from? We've got to go back to the beginning. He was originally a math teacher at Dalton on the Upper East Side, which is a very snooty private school here in New York City. Uh, he had never graduated from college, but he was there teaching calculus and physics. He tutored the son of legendary Bear Stearns trader, Ace Greenberg. And when he was tutoring his son, Ace said, you're so good at math, you should come work on Wall Street. He at that point went down and became an options trader, which is very math-based. After a few years, he left Bear Stearns. And according to the SEC, there were some questions about what happened at Bear Stearns and why he left. No more details than that, just some allegations. At that point, he hung out his own shingle, and he partnered with a guy named Stephen Hoffenberg, who was convicted of running a $460 million Ponzi scheme. At the time that man was convicted, he said that Epstein was involved, but no charges were ever brought against him. Those allegations were never corroborated. But they did try and do about three takeovers together at around this time. After that, he then took his company offshore to that island. And all of a sudden, he was set up in the Virgin Islands, where you don't have to report anything. You don't have to say your clients are. You don't have to say how much money you have on record. And for that reason, Forbes would never put him on the list because they couldn't verify how much money he had. At that point, his only public client on record is a guy named Leslie Wexner who is the CEO of the company that owns Victoria's Secret. And after that, he was always connected to Wexner, and he said that he only managed money for billionaires. If you couldn't give him a billion dollars, he wasn't gonna do it. But no one has any idea who any of his other clients were, and no one else has ever admitted, as far as we could tell and confirm, no one else has admitted to being a client of his. The strangest part is how that part of the story ends. He was given that townhouse from Wexner, it was deeded over to him, and no one can find a payment that he paid Wexner for it in any way. That is he complete. also has hand-me-down airplanes from Wexner that used to that airplane that you see him on at least one of them. Melissa, 